G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is the Let's Draw video where I take the requests of people live on Twitch uh, and I kind of make a poll and everyone votes on what I draw and today the winning vote came down to Hero and Baymax from the movie Big Hero 6, which I'm pretty stoked about because I love that movie and anyone who hasn't seen it should definitely check it out. So as these characters are from a 3D animated feature, I've got to make stylistic choices to make it work in a 2D style that represents both the original and also holds my own personal style and touch to it as well. These characters are a good example as to how to go about doing your construction lines on characters, especially someone like Baymax, who is essentially a giant marshmallow made up of very round, easy to represent shapes. The character hero, while a bit more complex, still can basically come down to those basic shapes, but then when we have the pose and the basic shapes in place, we can start to add the refinement and the details. Things like the clothing and the hair, the shoes and the, the expression and all that stuff. As I'm refining the detail, I make sure to start thickening my pencil lines almost to the point where they look quite solid, so that when I get to the line work, I can simply just draw over it and then erase the line work from underneath. I'm happy with my sketch work now. I'm ready to move on to my line work. I'm just using basic uni pin fine liners and I'm gonna go over the whole thing in a point one. So it's gonna be quite fine and that's basically because I really wanna get the details, especially in Hero's face, right? And then I'll be ready to erase the construction work from underneath and get onto the color. In doing the line work, I'm trying to keep things as crisp as possible. I want these characters and shapes to look really solid and clean. So I'm just using very simplistic lines, not going over the top with the detail or using techniques techniques such as cross hatching or anything like that, just keeping everything as clean and solid as I can. Now Baymax is a very simplistic character with white colouring, so that means the lines on him are going to stand out a heck of a lot, so I'm going to focus really hard to make sure that the lines I draw for him are as smooth as possible and that the shapes that make him up are really clean and solid. When I erase the lines, sometimes I like to use a kneadable eraser. It has a bit of a gum consistency and allows me to remove all my construction work in pencil without having all of the little bits that come off of a normal eraser spread all over the table after I do my erasing. So now I've got my line work and I'm happy with it. The construction work's gone. The interesting thing about this stage is if things start to look more refined, it obviously looks a lot crisper than it did when it was just the construction work. But I find you also lose a bit of dimension when you get rid of the construction work. And I think it, it seems to add a bit of shadow around the edges and make things feel a little more full body. And then when you're left with just the line work, though it can look more refined and nice, it can also feel a little flatter. But that's okay, because we're gonna rescue it with color, which is gonna really make it pop out all over again. And for that, I'm going to be using Copic markers. These Let's Draw videos are sponsored by Copic Australia. I love Copic markers, so make sure to check them out if you're ever interested in great quality, traditional coloring medium. Copic markers are my personal favorite choice. They're an alcohol-based marker, and that means that they mix into each other. And if you use a good base paper, this is Expressit Blending Card, it means that you can lay down foundation tones and then mix in some darker tones and blend them together for a really cool gradiented effect as the alcohol mixes. Before I jump straight into adding color, first I test out all the different colors that I want to try. It's better safe than sorry, so in testing them on a spare piece of blending paper, I can make sure I definitely get the color combinations that work for the piece. And I can also try riskier techniques or color mixing without putting the actual piece at risk. Baymax is done with a base of E40 brick white, and I use the zero colorless blender to blend that in with the blank white areas in the middle. So I accidentally screwed up and added the C2 instead of the colorless blender in a portion of Baymax's skin, but I quickly repaired this by softening it very quickly and as much as possible with my colorless blender to really dilute it and try and spread it around. And then I made sure that area where I accidentally put it is covered in a bit of extra shadow just to sort of hide my little mistake there. Then on the edges of Baymax, I use my E51 Milky White to add some shadow, but because that's such a peachy color, I also use C2 Cool Gray to sort of neutralize it and bring the tone back to a desaturated look. Then use my base of the Brick White to blend it back into its normal color. I use the Colorless Blender quite a lot on Baymax to, you guessed it, blend colorlessly. It's a bit of a tricky marker because it has no color. People don't often understand how to use it, but because it's alcohol, 
alcohol-based and uh, you're using alcohol-based markers, basically you can use it to soften the colors and help blend things together. The other thing to put in mind is it's wet when you put it down, so it's gonna look like it's putting down a little bit of a light gray color, but actually it's just wetting the paper. So don't worry about that. It's all gonna dry up and look white again. Just use it for your blending needs and don't worry about the off color that it gives while it's wet. It'll all return to normal once it's dry. Hero's skin tone is done with a base of E21 Baby Skin Pink with mid-tones in E11 Barley Beige and shadows in E13 Light Suntan. I've also added a touch of R20 Blush to add a little bit of that rosy-cheeked young look that he has. Hero's jacket is done with a base of B45 Smoky Blue with shadows added in C4 and C6 Cool Grey. I also use the B12 Ice Blue on some of the edges of the jacket. His t-shirt is done in a base of R24 Prawn and with shadows in E07 Light Mahogany. His khaki pants are done with a base of E31 Brick Beige with shadows in E43 Dull Ivory. His shoes have Y17 Golden Yellow in the laces and I use a dark grey for the central part of the shoe. And his hair is done with a mix of neutral greys from N5 to N9. So I'm happy with how this piece has turned out and I'm nearly finished, but the finishing touches I like to add at the very end, I like to go around the whole piece with a slightly thicker line. I'm gonna go around in a 0.3 or a 0.5. And I tend to find with that slightly thicker outline, it really helps strengthen the silhouette, make the whole piece sort of pop out and really feel sort of refined and finished with something quite minimal. It also helps you clean up where you've gone over the lines with your markers as well. So it's quite a useful little trick. So here you go, I've finished my piece and I'm very happy with it. Thank you for watching. This is Hero and Baymax from Big Hero 6. And in the Twitch chat, this was requested by Nicholas. So I'm dedicating this to Nicholas Anger. Sign and we're done. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to watch future Let's Draw Lives on my Twitch channel, which you can check out by clicking the link on the screen or in the description. Thanks for joining, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, I'll see you later.